Hello and welcome to episode number 134 of Week in Review. My name is Sean and on this week's show it's been another light content week so we'll give you a quick uh, update review, uh, a review update rather, on Star Trek Discovery and we'll talk a smidge about Fall Guys as well. And over the past week Bus Sim had a brand new announcement so we're going to take a look at the teaser trailer and some details about that. I'll give you some uh, like live thoughts and reactions to that stuff. We'll also look forward to this week's new releases and the streams happening over on twitch.tv slash Rex. To lead off this week's quick review updates, we have Star Trek Discovery. I watched two more episodes. I'm still enjoying it on an episode-to-episode -episode basis, but I do think that the overarching war aspect of it is simultaneously super important because it literally affects every character in the series and how they act very directly, but it also doesn't really seem to have a timetable for when it's ever going to like move forward. I think we might get a little bit more action or interaction with them at the end of or after the end of episode six, which is where I am, because there's a pretty big plot revelation or thing that happens that seems like it's going to kickstart something that needs to be done and taken care of quickly. In the last couple of episodes, we've gotten a lot of uh, clarity as far as like character motivations and some of the relationships. I was correct in my assessment that Michael Burnham was going to be a little bit softer. It's kind of weird because she is this, uh, this series kind of like half human, half Vulcan character, kind of that, that mix of like the logic fighting with the emotional human side. Um, and I kind of forgot about that. They like set it up early in the show, but they don't go back to it super consistently. It does explain some of her coldness in the previous couple of episodes. And it seems like she's going to try to balance that a little bit more and embrace the human side of things a little bit more. We get a little bit more of her relationship with her, uh, her father after, um, her parents were killed in an attack. We get uh, a little bit more of his backstory and what's going on. We also got a name drop of a character that I audibly groaned at because boy, oh boy, can Star Trek just not leave their old characters alone? They just, they have to bring them back. It, it's a weird series because they just keep repeating themselves and it's super frustrating sometimes. We also get a little bit more backstory with the captain of the Discovery. Uh, he is very selfishly motivated. This war that he is involved in is going to define him. He wants to win it at all costs. He does not care um, or kind of cares. I don't really know. His character has taken a weird turn to the very dark side and some of his actions, especially at the end of episode six, are very vindictive and manipulative and just not good and not even in like good faith it like feels like he is very specifically like you don't like the way I do things well I'll do things the way you, that you want them done or you think you want them done and I'll show you the cost of that and that's very like I understand it because part of me is like I kind of would do that like I get it but it's also like you're a captain of a starship and you should probably be not as vindictive of an asshole as you're being but hey whatever we'll see where his character arc goes he's our damaged dark captain character uh, i'm interested to see where it, where it goes but the show definitely needs to pick up with its overarching plot um because i don't know how many plates it can start spinning on top of itself before things start crumbling together because it seems like there is a lot going on but it's not really moving that much further we get a little bit more uh, with Tilly, she has a very like clear, direct um, objective and goal that she wants to attack. So we'll see where it goes from here. I again, I like it from an episode to episode perspective, but I think the overarching plot is a little bit slow so far. Hopefully, it picks up though. The other quick review update is Fall Guys. I still love the game. I think it's great. It got an update um, recently. I don't know if it's just me, but it seems like the beans are bouncier. Like you bounce around a whole lot more. I don't remember falling over quite as much and having quite the setbacks when everything kind of funneled together but still really fun the costumes are great i really love the game we have a new final event that i'm totally blanking on but it's basically two uh circular moving uh sticks and one of them moves a little bit faster you have to jump over it and then the other one is bigger and it floats around on the top and you have to duck under it so you have to you know bob and weave there's another version of it in the previous rounds but the difference between these two is the platform, the circular platform that you're standing on, it doesn't fall away. The one in the finals does fall away, so you can't actually get put in a position where you end up on a section 
that doesn't have enough around it to get to. It's fine. It's one of the better finals games. It did eat my input a couple of times. I got like a number of second and third places because I could have sworn I pushed the X button to jump, but then when the uh, thing came around, the game just didn't register it or read it correctly, and it took me out, and that was kind of frustrating. Actually, Sunday was quite a frustrating, I believe it's part five, but that was a frustrating day. I kept getting to the finals, and I just could not put a victory together. I finally got two of them, but they were close, and it wasn't like, it wasn't as consistent as I would have liked for how consistent I was, how consistently I was getting to the finals, but still a great game, still love it, still playing it, still enjoying it, um, and I guess that's my quick little update review on that. Other than that, didn't really watch or play a whole lot. I didn't watch the second episode of Lower Decks. I just, I didn't specifically not watch it. I also just didn't go out of my way to watch it, so there's that for you. Continuing to watch Discovery, continuing to, continuing to enjoy it, and I'm going to continue to watch it because I enjoy it, and I'll continue to play Fall Guys because that game rules. All right, let's try something a little bit differently. As you can see up above me, I think that's the right hand. I don't know. I can't see my OBS. Up above me on one of these hands, it says Bus Simulator 21 uh, teaser trailer. I'm basically pointing to my at, or pointing for myself at the title and where it is uh, located on my screen. Uh, this game, I think, was announced the same day that the Halo delay was announced. So Lord Kesha giveth and she taketh away. Um, but we got this and I have not watched the trailer yet. So I thought what would be interesting because I haven't watched or played a ton of content would be to kind of give you a live reaction uh, thought process for it. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll play the video here. Astrogen Entertainment is uh, putting this together and here we go. Looks like we're, we're in America, I know that. Hell yeah. All right, there we go. Okay. Oh, <gasps> double decker bus. Yes. All right, cool. All right, so that was the Bus Simulator 21 uh, teaser trailer. Cool stuff there, a little tease about what we're looking at. Um, obviously, the big new addition here is Double Decker Buses. I did see that part um, on the uh, on Twitter when I was looking at uh, when I was looking at Twitter because I just I don't know how I didn't see this. I, it was super weird, but I did see the Double Decker Buses. Super huge. Um, because I love double decker buses and I always wanted to drive one and I thought that would have been a really cool thing to add to bus simulator um, slash bus simulator 18 depending on what platform you are playing on and we have that here in bus simulator 21 and that's very exciting uh, we'll scroll over here we have a new license partner very cool we have two different buses here the uh, Enervo 200 and the Enervo en Enviro Enviro that's what that says Enviro tw 200 and the Enviro 500 this looks really sleek. I would love to see the very classic uh, double-decker bus with like kind of the punched-in front um, is what I think of when I think of double-deckers. But this one's still very cool. Um, and we get to Welcome to USA. We are in America this time around, which is, uh, is very cool. So we'll scroll down here just a little bit. Uh, game information, your bus, your route, your schedule. Look forward to Bus Simulator 21 and the most comprehensive and advanced fleet in the history of the series. An impressive number of officially licensed and faithfully modeled buses uh, from renowned manufacturers. From oh boy, from renew renowned 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 manufacturers like Alexander Dennis are waiting to tackle everyday or the everyday demands of public transit. Get ready for the brand new U.S. map, uh, Angel Shores, and the European Seaside valley map oh okay that you know from bus simulator 18 including the map expansion with Kyrgyzstan and Sonnenstein sweet that's very cool I didn't I didn't realize they were doing that the more open world approach to bus simulator 21 means you get to experience the exciting daily life of a bus driver in two massive freely explorable cities including their industry and outlying districts, a vibrant Chinatown district, a promenade, and the surrounding hilly countryside, and the business park. Different difficulty levels and play modes are also available for a wide range of player types. Interesting. Expert right here. That's a cool little addition right there. Different play styles and, uh, and difficulty modes. I don't think there's a difficulty level 
in um in bus simulator 18 i'm not 100 percent sure I, I could be wrong about that maybe i'm thinking of uh difficulty level in too much of a traditional like easy medium hard expert sort of thing uh they do have some sliders you can adjust that that uh uh tinker with it i don't know why i could not think of that word bus simulator 21 not only allows you to become an experienced driver it also gives you the opportunity be, opportunity to become a successful manager and build your own local public transit empire make full use of the game's sophisticated management systems interesting do you prefer getting out from behind the desk and taking the wheel no problem the intelligent ai in bus sim 21 can take over the management duties and let pure bus drivers simply enjoy driving Play in either single-player or synced multiplayer mode and transport your passengers safely and promptly to their destinations and be rewarded for your uh, prompt and safe driving at the end of the day. Enjoy Bus Simulator on PC or console for the most comprehensive bus driving experience ever in the history of the series. Awesome. So here we go. We'll look at some features. Here's some screenshots for you uh, as a work in progress. I like, hopefully, they'll have more of like a housing area kind of like neighborhoods or uh, residential areas is, that, is what i was looking for because bus simulator 18 has like a business district some outer like country areas in downtown but they don't really have like residential areas so hopefully that is coming in bus simulator 21 um clicking back here we have the chinatown district right here uh we have a capital area interesting we have this very new architecture theater entertainment thing i don't know cool i like this split with all the trees looks nice so we'll take a look here at the uh gameplay features a great variety of officially licensed and lovingly reproduced bus models by manufacturers we already uh, read that cool two large environments inspired by the u.s and europe just read that drive your bus solo or get together with friends in cooperative multiplayer mode awesome several difficulty levels awesome enhanced management options detailed drafting of timetables this is a fantastic feature this is a very like sean specific feature um because i think the one thing that bus simulator needs in the current iteration 18 slash bus simulator on the console is the ability to set timetables because of the structure of the uh, the missions you end up running buses in the same spots over and over and over again and if you don't delete the routes then all of a sudden you have three buses on top of each other immediately um, following one another at the exact same time and it would be nice to go in and offset that stuff so this like a certain stop like in the industrial area right that instead of being serviced three times in like 90 seconds is instead serviced three times over the course of 45 minutes or even you know it's uh like right at noon and then like 1207 and then 1215 and there are three different buses that go through that area that's something that i'm really going to like tinkering with and i think it can help uh, maximize the like profit aspect of it but it also can help just make the game make sense so you're not constantly following your own buses so that's that's really great the possibility to visit different bus dealerships spread out across the map all right route planning in uh, consideration of passenger volume and different peak times that's cool hopefully like if you hopefully that kind of dials or uh uh, links back to the drafting of timetables so if you have a route that's super popular but it's really popular from like 9 a.m to 11 a.m and then again from 3 a 3 p.m excuse me to 6 p.m maybe instead of running them every 30 minutes you run them every 15 minutes or you know or instead of running them every hour you run them every half hour that could be something really interesting um that i definitely definitely like uh they also have reworked traffic in pedestrian ai dynamic weather changes and a day to night cycle all of those are awesome hopefully that means that pedestrians won't just walk out into the intersection or cars won't just drive out when you are going full speed uh that would be super great because i'm really tired of hitting pedestrians the dynamic weather changes are really interesting so i don't always have to just drive in the rain i can start in the sun and maybe it gets cloudy and then it rains or it's raining and then it snows whatever that's 
that's totally cool. And then the day to night cycle is also interesting as well, because it'd be cool to drive a route that starts like maybe it starts at like four and the entire route is like an hour and a half. And then by the time it's like five 30, if it's like in a winter sort of setting, then all of a sudden it's dark. That could be really, really interesting. Freely usable comfort features such as fast travel directly on the map, fast forwarding time and taking over buses from AI driver means less time spent in the menus and more time on the street. If so desired by the player. Cool. All of these changes and updates sound really awesome. I'm really excited for the timetable aspect of it. I think that sounds really cool. Uh, hopefully you can like maybe even design your own bus maps because that'd be really sweet. Again, that's a very Sean specific thing, but it definitely, uh, definitely works for me. I also like that it's Bus Simulator 21 across all platforms. I think it's weird that they num name it after or number it after the year because this isn't an annualized franchise. It makes sense in the context of NBA, NFL, NHL. NCAA, all that stuff, because those come out yearly, but it's been three years since the PC has gotten a Bus Simulator game, so it does look a little odd that it is Bus Simulator 21. Could just name it Bus Simulator 4 and you'd be totally fine. But it's uniform across all the platforms. Hopefully this is day and date on the, play on the PC, on the PlayStation 4, and on the Xbox One. I'm very happy that it's just on the PlayStation 4 and just on the Xbox One. This is not a game that needs to be pushed to the Series X or the PlayStation 5, the next generation of consoles. The uh, bus simulator on Xbox One was pretty rough when it launched. It took a couple months to get where it probably should have been at launch. It's finally the the stable, well-running game that it is now. Um, I love it very much. I'm very excited about this, uh, and I, I can't wait for it. Um, I have poured... I don't know, 55 hours or something crazy like that uh, into Bus Simulator on Xbox One that was just streaming the game, and I need to do a full playthrough again for uh, one more achievement. So plenty more Bus Simulator content here on uh, on YouTube and over on twitch.tv slash Rex. but I'm very excited about this. I'll be there day and date uh, because I really enjoy the games. Um, so there you go. I thought that would be fun to do something a little bit different on this episode of Week in Review and give you kind of uh, something that I'm looking forward to in the more far-flung future of the gaming space. Finally, on this week's show, we'll take a look at the week's new releases. There's one movie that's coming out that's streaming uh, that is interesting to me, and it's called Pretending I'm a Superman, and it's a documentary about the Tony Hawk Pro Skater uh, series. So I'm very interested to check that out. There wasn't really anything of note on Blu-ray, but there were a couple of games that I thought would be nice uh, to talk about. And I think the biggest game and the most interesting game, uh, even though I won't be able to play it because I don't have a computer that can run it, is Flight Simulator. Uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator is back. It's available on PC through Xbox Game Pass. It looks like or sounds like there's going to be an Xbox version, a uh, console version in the future. Um, but there's something about this game that just entices me. Like, I'm super curious to just watch people fly places. I don't know why. It seems like it's a very calm and relaxing game to both play and watch. And the reviews have been, uh, so far, very good for it. Um, so that's that's this week's big release. For me, personally, it's Helheim Hassle, which is a game that I think I accidentally said the title incorrectly in the review f of the Xbox Demo Fest a couple of weeks ago. This was definitely a highlight for me, and it is out this week. We also have She Sees Red, which is an FMV game that I played on the Nintendo Switch. That is coming at least to Xbox One, maybe PS4, I'm not 100% sure. But I liked it, and the achievement list looks easy, so I'm sure I'll go back through it and try and get that 1,000 gamer score. We also have New Super Lucky, Tale, which is a Switch port of an Xbox One exclusive that kind of bundles everything together and put it out on the Switch, so then they're putting it back on the Xbox One, but it has a separate achievement list, so that's pretty cool. It's a really good, cute platformer. I enjoyed my time with it. I don't know if this is worth, like, jumping back into, but that fresh achievement list, definitely tempting. And then last but not least, we have Samurai Jack Battle Through Time. Um, I've never watched Samurai Jack, but I think it looks cool visually. And now we have a video game that I guess takes you through the like favorite moments of the um, of the series because it has something to do with uh, the ending of the series. I don't really know. Uh, the game looked cool. I wouldn't have necessarily put it on this list because I don't have any experience with Samurai Jack. But I did catch a live stream of the gameplay today, and it looked pretty neat. So there you go. If you're interested in that. As for the streams over on twitch.tv slash Shaunasaurus Rex, going to be kind of a sporadic week. We have the season finale of season two of uh, Grab Bag. Episodes 13 and 14 are airing live on Twitch on Wednesday. That'll be about 6.30 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. We had two good games last time, uh, so I won't spoil it if you missed it, but keep an eye on YouTube because they are 
really good. I might stream over the weekend. I'm not exactly sure what to stream. Probably more Fall Guys, I, I would assume, because I'm really enjoying that game. But I'll definitely be back on Monday to check out Madden NFL 21. Uh, we're going to check out the new gameplay mode called The Yard, and we'll play probably just a regular football game and check that out for a couple of hours. Um, that video is going to go up on Tuesday, which means that we can review next week will actually go up on Monday instead of its regular Tuesday slot, so I can fit in that Madden video. Because, you know, you got to get those views with the hot new games. And Madden, for as much as people hate it, is the hot new game. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of Week in Review. If you like the content, you can scroll on down. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands. Scroll on down and hit that subscribe button and then ring that bell so you know when I put up new videos. Then, once you're done with that, you can scroll on down and you can leave me a comment down in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of the Bus Sim 2021 stuff. Uh, let me know what you think of Star Trek Discovery if you're watching that. Let me know what you think of Fall Guys if you're playing that. You can also let me know if there's anything uh, that I'm missing or something that you think I would think is cool that's coming out that I'm not talking about. Head on over to twitch.tv slash Rex for uh, streams happening on Wednesday and Monday for sure, and maybe a stream uh, over the weekend. And, as always, check back every Tuesday right here for more Week in Review, except for next week. Check back Monday next week, and then Tuesday is usually when it goes up. You'll figure it out. We'll see you next week.